may be seated. Uh, this morning is, uh, is Mother's Day, if you didn't know. Allie, want to come on over? I know it feels like it's more like November out there. Um, Christine, who is going to be singing a solo for us in a little while, went to see some country guy last night. Luke who? Brian. Luke Brian. Oh. And she said it was snowing on the way home. So, uh, uh, happy Mother's Day. <laughs> uh, but when, when Christine will be singing uh, Serdesh Namatko, and Allie will be placing the crown on Mary's statue. So, whenever you're ready. Let us pray. Grant, most gracious Father, 
Now with purity of heart, we may worthily fulfill this holy action, establish remembrance of the Last Supper and the death of Jesus Christ, and for our sanctification and salvation. Be present among us, Jesus, our most perfect Master, because you said there were two or three are gathered together in my name, you are among them. We also ask, Lord, that through this holy liturgy, we may experience a spiritual revival and a better understanding of your holy will, bringing us together in one great family, guided by your commandments and by love, truth, and justice. And may we say together, let us pray to the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one body and invisible, revealed in triune power for all time, now and forever. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God, Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Son of God, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. We are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Now, during those days, when the disciples were increasing in number, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows are being neglected in daily distribution of food. And the twelve called together the whole community of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should neglect the word of God in order to wait at tables. Therefore, friends, select from among yourselves seven men of good standing, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this task, while we, for our part, will devote ourselves to prayer and to serving the word. What they said pleased the whole community, and they chose Stephen, a man of full, full of faith and the Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Paramanus, Nicholas, and a proselyte of Antioch. They had these men stand before the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. And the word of God continued to spread. The number of the disciples increased greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Hallelujah. 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 It is written in the prophets, they should be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Cleanse my heart and my lips, Almighty God. She cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal. In your mercy, cleanse me so I may worthy proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, 
that I may worthily proclaim this holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again, and I will take you to myself, so where I am, there you may also be. And where I am going, you already know the way. But Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going, how can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you know him, and you have seen him. And Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. And Jesus said to Philip, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me, that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Truly I say to you, whosoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will do even greater ones than these, because I am returning to the Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise that sows more confusion than anything else. 
Like it wouldn't help my cause of celebrating mothers and their attachment to their children this morning if I shared the advice on those occasional moments, occasional moments when sons and daughters of any age, of any combination, that somehow they may be a little bit more exhausting than exhilarating, that mothers should <laughs> that mothers should totally follow the instructions on that bottle of aspirin. So when you go home and when those kids get to be a little bit too much and you follow the directions on this bottle, it says take two tablets and keep away from children. So, that's a real good bit of advice right there for all of the mothers when it just gets to be a little bit too much. So the Bible passages that seem to be the most strange, the most out of place, like saying stay away from children on Mother's Day, those may be the most historical because there's no other reason for them to be there except that they were there. So one of those surprising passages is found early in the Gospel of Mark. We're told that Jesus has been away preaching and now he has returned back to his home. And there were so many people gathered around his house that it was creating a huge disturbance and was starting to attract the attention of the authorities. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to attract the attention of the authorities. So when Mary hears about this, she goes out, and in the words of the gospel, she tries to restrain Jesus. She tries to stop Jesus from preaching this new and this dangerous message about God and Jesus' special relationship with God. Now at first, this may seem out of place, that it puts Mary in an unfavorable light. But I think what we have here is an honest story about a mother who is deeply concerned about the welfare of her child. She doesn't want him to get hurt, so she tries to quiet his preaching. Now, she obviously fails, but we also know what happens to Jesus because he kept preaching. And there again was Mary, his mother, mourning the death of her child that she so desperately tried to prevent. The story may be a bit unflattering in one sense, and this is why it probably actually happened, because why else would a gospel writer put such a story into the Bible? But it also testifies to the real-life mother's love that Mary had for her son. Jesus, just calm down. Stop saying such outlandish things. It's better just stay home, become a carpenter like your dad, and don't create a ruckus, because she knew that this was a real possibility. That speaks to Mary's authentic love for her child, Jesus. Now, motherhood doesn't always have to be perfect to be love-filled and to be faith-filled. And this is why I appreciate those public service ads for adoption and foster care that I've seen occasionally on the television. They show those moments when parents can really embarrass their kids or just be out of sync with where their kids are coming from. And I really love the one where the mother, she's, and maybe you've seen this, she's vacuuming underneath the couch her two sons come rushing into the living room, and they've got an empty hamster cage, and they've lost their pet rodent. And then you hear this weird sucking sound. You can hear it sucking up through the, uh, you know, through the vacuum hose, and then all of a sudden, the vacuum starts spitting out these sparks and smoke, and those kids, their face just drops as they watch all of this. And then the announcer comes in over all of this scene in the living room, and it says, you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of kids in foster care who would love to put up with you. And that is so true. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect mom. And how true this is. Mothers, not even the mother of Jesus, were perfect mothers. And they have to try their best. They have to love their best. And that's even better than perfect. That idea of a real, authentic love for the child. Not that, you know, kind of idyllic, I used to watch Leave it to Beaver when I was a kid growing up. You know, that mother, uh, whatever her name was, Billingsley, you know, uh, used to float around that house and wake up beautiful, go to bed beautiful, you know, go to the dinner table beautiful, everything was beautiful. That doesn't have to be the way motherhood is. It has to be faith-filled and it has to be love-filled. And that's even better than perfect. So this is why today, on Mother's Day, the church not only celebrates all of the blessings that mothers add to our lives and to the lives of their children, but we also pray for them as well. Theirs is a selfless and a tireless love. You know, a couple of days ago, for example, I heard on StoryCorps a recording of a mother being interviewed by her daughter. 
And the baby was born with a generic genetic disorder that left all of her bones susceptible to a fracture. They were talking about one day this girl's sister accidentally dropped an orange on her hand and she broke her arm just by being hit by an orange. The baby was born because of the process of birth with a fractured skull, fractured ribs, a fractured arm. The doctors told the mother the baby is probably going to die, that she should leave the baby with them, and that she should simply go home. The mother could not do that. She gently cradled the baby in her arms and in a rocking chair in that hospital nursery. And the mom said in that interview that she felt the baby's heartbeat against her own heartbeat. And from that moment on, she told that little girl, we have one heart, you and I. And that baby is now 45 years old, and she has a successful career in San Francisco. Motherhood is not about the logic. Go home. This baby will not survive. We'll take care of the baby. The motherhood is about the love that felt that baby's heartbeat and knew that she would do everything she could to help that baby. It's about a togetherness that I really don't think that any of the rest of us can really understand. And that love and connection means that a mother sacrifices for her child or her children no matter what their age may be and that it can sometimes be an excessively heavy burden. And that's why today, on Mother's Day, we pray and not only celebrate motherhood, but we also pray for mothers and for all that they do. I hope that our mothers have a wonderful day of pampering ahead of them. They deserve all of the extra attention they get today. And sunshine or rain or who knows, maybe even snow, may God's blessing be with all of the mothers of this congregation, of all of our communities, and really throughout all the world on this their special day. And this we pray in the name of Mother Mary's little baby boy, Jesus Christ. And these things we ask in his name. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Lord, in this Mother's Day, we offer our prayers for all of our mothers living and deceased. We offer them our thanks and, and appreciation for all that they have done for each and every one of us. We also offer our prayers for the health of Kate Gordon, the aunt of John Slay. Uh, she has breast cancer, stage four, and this is offered by Marianna Foster. We offer our prayers in memory of William Girardi Sr. on the second anniversary of his passing, which was May 11th of 2015. We offer our prayers for Katie uh, Milholm, who died in a car accident last week. The day after her funeral, she and her husband, Ed, would have celebrated their 44th wedding anniversary. Um, this, uh, Katie and Ed were both classmates of Ellen Scrosky, uh, uh, both high school classmates of Ellen Scrosky. We offer our prayers and continue to offer our prayers for Jenny Navarro in her continued recovery at home, and this is offered by her family. We also offer a prayer at this time for Bernie Yenchkin, who passed away about a month ago, is offered by his friend, Ed Elzensky. We also offer our prayers this Mother's Day for Josephine Lisensky, who passed away recently. This prayer is being offered by her son, Joe, and also Linda, Jacqueline, and Owen. We also continue to offer our prayers for Liz Bridgman, who is battling cancer and raising three young girls on her own. Alice, a 16-year-old with lymphoma Hodgkin's disease, and Alicia, a young mother of three with stage four breast cancer, all offered by Cindy Benjamin. We offer our prayers for Frank Skrosky, as offered by Brother Don, the Skrosky, Gates, and Kirkendall families. I offer prayers for Bishop Thomas Gannat's health and for the strength and well-being of his wife, Catherine, as well. We also offer the prayers for the following for battling cancer. Meg Connors by Ellen and Don Skrosky. Maurice Lizelle is offered by myself. Richard Pope by the Cohen Foster family. Two-year-old Jackson Lay is offered by Marianne Foster. We also offer our prayers of thanksgiving for Frank Marchand, who was battling cancer, but at his recent diagnosis was found to be cancer-free. So we offer our prayer of thanksgiving for that. And I also offer a private attention uh, for a dear friend of mine who was recently hospitalized and pray for his full and speedy recovery. Are there any intentions that you would like to offer from the congregation? For all of these prayers, Lord, plus the ones that we keep in the privacy of our thoughts, we ask you to hear them 
We also ask the Lord to bless each and every one of us here gathered, to bless those who are perish who are with us here now, and also those who are perish who are unable to be with us here today, and those who are perish who have chosen not to be with us here today. For these things together, Lord, we pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. <coughs> blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God and true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made for us, for our salvation, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again and fulfilled the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the cross. I believe in one holy Catholic Catholic Church. I have found one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. For God who said that light shine out of darkness has shone in our hearts to bring to light the knowledge of the glory of God on the face of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah.
Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be accepted to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Almighty God, accept these gifts that we now offer to you, and help us through them to honor our mothers, that our days may be long in the land which you have given to us. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Now, 
that they may be consecrated in truth, that all may be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you. I pray that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I living in them, you living in me, that their unity may be made complete. Father, all those you gave me I would have in my company, where I am to see this glory of mine, which is your gift to me, because of the love you bore me before the world began. I myself am the bread of life. No one who comes to me shall ever be hungry. No one who believes in me shall ever thirst. After these things, other words of the archpriestly prayer and with holy fervor, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hand, again he gave thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you shall do these things, do them in remembrance of me. servants and your faithful people, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son and our Lord, as well as his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we receive from your own gifts and presents a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. These gifts we receive with a joyful countenance as from him, who is the giver of all temporal and eternal good gifts, and with an unshakable faith they will become for our souls a saving remedy. We humbly ask, Almighty God, to command that our offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your highest altar in the presence of your divine majesty. That we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who have passed on to eternity. To these souls, Lord, and to all who rest in Christ, grant everlasting life, and to those who are in life straight through the path of righteousness, unmindful of your fatherly love, mercifully shorten their suffering. We ask this in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, to hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and all your saints, who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts are always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine Master merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Of whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, and with him, and in him, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence.
future. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, is also Andrew and all the same, grant us peace in our day, supported by the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church and Grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, and you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching, and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused for my judgment. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master awaken in me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make me your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. Grant this who lives reigns of God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Shall I return to the Lord for all the graces that He has given me? I will take the chalice of salvation and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon the Lord and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
body and the blood of Christ. The 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 body and the blood of Christ. Peace and the blood of Jesus, and God, the Father, the Spirit, the Son, and the Son, made you forever. The body and the blood of Christ.
Almighty Father, strengthened by your holy word and by this holy communion, give us ever grateful hearts the blessings of motherhood, inspire us to understand and appreciate a mother's spirit of love and of self-denial, of intelligent and voluntary self-sacrifice. We ask this for our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Oh, the sacrifices offered. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice of God, though unworthy, have offered the sight of your majesty, be acceptable to you. And your mercy may be effective for myself and all of those for whom I have offered it, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning, and through him all things came into being, and apart from him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all may believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man is coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know him anymore. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. And he who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's holiness, but by God. And the word became flesh, and made his dwelling among us, we have seen his glory. The glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Jesus.